Don't do it. Don't don't hit the button. I know you want to hit the skip button. That's what podcasts are great for because you can see the ad coming and you're like, I'm going to just skip this. Skip, 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 skip and get onto the aftercast, which I love that. I'm glad you like what we do. But just for a minute, don't hit it. Take your finger off the button. Don't hit skip. This is way more important than just some ad wanting to sell you something. We've partnered with uh, Food for the Hungry, FH, as the cool kids call them, and they do amazing work with children that are vulnerable all around the world and they get them the help that they need through people just like you. Yeah, and just think about this. A little over a dollar a day can help your sponsored child as well as other children in the community get food, a better education, clean water, and medical treatment. So you can help end poverty right now by visiting fh.org slash Wally Show. That's fh.org slash Wally Show. And the cool thing about this is, A, it helps the child and the community be better because if you just have one child that's being helped, the community is still suffering and it doesn't create a sustainable long-term solution. So that's what I love about how FH works. But then the other great part of this is you get to interact with that child. You can formulate that relationship with them and you can write them and encourage them and because they have really hard lives. And so the fact that you get to be a little piece of Jesus to them every day is a gift. So thank you for if you've made it this far, not hitting skip and maybe just go ahead and uh, pop on over to FH.org slash Wally Show and think about sponsoring one of our FH kids right now because every minute that we wait is another minute, week, year, month that these kids are waiting for someone to come in and help them as well. So check it out, fh.org slash Wally Show. Welcome to the Wally Show Aftercast, all the stuff we did not get to during the course of the show today. Sometimes things happen like right before we uh, come into the Aftercast here, after we finish the show. And uh, we used to do a segment on the show called uh, Here's What You Didn't Hear, and it's things that we're talking about in between the records and stuff, or like this just beforehand. Uh, I was telling Betty and Gavin about a guy who... Like, email me. Oh, well, first he called in one time really mad that we don't play uh, a bunch of new music and that we're, you know... Oh, that guy. That guy, disrespecting oh, artists and we're gatekeeping and blah, 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 blah. And then he said I was part of the problem and then I like was like, well, wait, Lost wait a it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, but it was just frustrating because I was trying to be so nice. And then he had sent me like a follow-up email and still just kind of like, uh But then, uh, so he sent me a, an email yesterday uh making a joke about how many Jeremy Camp songs we play. And I didn't realize it was the same guy. And so I quickly just said, oh, that's funny. You know, because it was. Like, what he said was funny. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't pick the music, but that's funny. Um, And so... uh like so, I emailed him back, but then now, the, now I've got another email back. But this time, it's it's more cordial, you know. But he just is really caustic, and and he's angry and bitter at the music industry for not giving him a chance because he he had a band that didn't go, you know. Is this? It was he angry and caustic in this email that you're talking about? The late, the first one, yeah, and the second one wasn't as bad, but he's still like snippy, you know. You can yeah. still, he's still, he still, he still has a chip on his shoulder. He gets about a shot it. in when he. Exactly. Can, even if it's just a exactly. little Exactly. And I'm just like I'm just like, well, maybe you didn't make it in the Christian industry because maybe it's a you problem. Maybe you're not like a really nice person to people and maybe they pick up on that and they're like, Yeah, I don't want to be associated with you. Like or maybe he's become this way just because he's you know, not accomplished what he wanted to accomplish and he's just bitter. Like I get that too. Uh, you know, but I was just kind of talking about it and then Betty was like, What did you just say to me? Maybe I just said, Well maybe he was having a bad day. And I'm like, Well maybe you should just be quiet and she goes, Okay. <laughs> but that's how Betty is. Betty always sees the uh other side she always sees everybody else well she sees every side uh she just chooses to be on everybody else's side other than mine um True. yeah you're and a so, good advocate for the other side of any she is. argument that he has right oh, oh okay. yeah it's amazing she plays devil's advocate well that's why i time. call her uh uh betty lucifer <laughs> oh, yeah. no i think it's because like i know i'm guilty of having bad days yeah, sure so, all the time i mean and yeah. i would want those to forgive me. I'm on my. If I ask for forgiveness, I don't know uh, if this guy no, did or not. No, no, no. And, so. and the Bible talks about seventy times seven. And so I'm like being very cordial, like I'm being nice back. So I'm not being a jerk. Uh, yeah, so I got a few more to go. But like, <laughs> no, no interaction I've had with him has been a good one on his side. He's just bent, and he's like, like mad at me because I work in the Christian age industry, and I'm part of the problem for him not making it, kind yeah. of thing. You and know, he, it's like, dude, I don't control this stuff, yeah. man. Well, yeah, music's not our. Ours to choose. No, from. I wish it was. Like I'd play different stuff, but it's like, it's just it's just the way it is. But like again, if somebody comes at me in a different way, 
musically and they send me stuff like i i get people that send me music all the time you know and i can't help them but like if they're being cool with me like yeah i'll listen to it you know like oh okay i'll give them some feedback or whatever or, you know if you know i see the music director in the hall go, oh hey i saw this new band they were pretty cool you know uh but like i can't i don't have any decision making but if you're cool with me like it goes a long way and you never know it's this is such a small business such a small business you don't want to have people be standing in your way unnecessarily so, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what this guy is, like, kind of, he's kind of doing these. I, I, again, I you're frustrated and bent, but you're going at the wrong guy, man. Yeah. Oh, but anyway, but it's just funny how Betty, like, it, like definitely, to be in your world where you see all sides of things it quickly. No, oh, oh, it stinks? Yeah. Oh, oh being the devil's advocate? Well, just, uh, it stinks in the way that um, like I, every, a lot of people I know, especially you, Wally, are very passionate about things. everything. Yeah, about everything. Um, I'm not very passionate about anything. anything. Me right. too. Um, <laughs> you guys are the best. <laughs> but I think that's okay because I mean, if we were all passionate about everything, it'd be a rant just, fest, right? right. And that's no fun. So there needs to be some peacekeeping around there. But also too, I when you when you see everyone's side. Then you also can't make decisions, and you also forget yourself because mm. oh, you put everybody else in front of that, Man. and then you forget what you're standing for. Interesting. Preach it. Yeah, I used to. There was this one guy that did a radio show, and it's funny because he was kind of wired like you, like a nine. Mm -hmm. And I could watch him take a position and start here, and then as he's doing the break, he j he would literally just come full circle and end up disagreeing with himself, you know. And like <laughs> yeah. that's and that's, that's the hard part. Like uh, doing this job, like especially if you're hosting, you need to take a position and you need to stay on that position and you need to not waver from that position, even in the face of. Like actual facts and the fact that you are 100% wrong, you don't waver from that position. Like that's how you do this job on, in my chair. We all have different chairs, yeah. mm -hmm. but that's how my chair does this job. Okay. And your chair is different. Your chair is to be yeah. that voice of reason or that extra level of, uh, you know, uh, thought, you know. And, 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 and so, yeah, because like there'll be times like we'll finish something up. I go, oh, yeah, I might have been wrong on that. <laughs> you know, but, but I'm not backing down on the air. Uh, uh, here's some of the stuff going on in the world today. I had seen this. this I, I didn't really think about this. I, you know, we've talked about this. You, Rock, you were amazed to hear that there are people in the space station that are living there. Like that yeah. was news to you. That was news to awesome. me. Right. She didn't realize that. You know, and like, again, it's not something she's passionate about, so it makes sense. You don't think about it. Yeah. But here's what you don't think about. Everything they have in space up there has to be brought from Earth. Like they're not up there like doing anything like like they don't have a like a grocery store right right they'd have to have seeds brought There's up no to Kroger. them if they're gonna yeah if they're gonna grow something they've got to have seeds brought to them from earth earth is still their mothership in essence if they clog the toilet they need someone to bring a plunger exactly if you didn't bring one you're hosed you know and so everything has to come up one. and i was reminded of this uh when they are sending a new shipment to uh, the international space station and it's got like fresh apples That's uh cool. tomatoes Kiwi. Yeah, but everything spoils so quickly. How do they do that? I don't, that I don't have no idea. They, they freeze the, it. Rockets yeah, are fast. What's the ice cream that they have? Oh, astronaut space. ice cream. Oh, yeah. oh a dipping dip dots. dots. Yeah, yeah. So good. just that, but yeah. apple flavor. Well, they freeze dry stuff, but then I'm sure yeah. I'm sure they give them some fresh things, you know, because it can go up there. I mean, it it it's faster than getting it from uh, uh, Hello Fresh. I mean, it'd be there in a day. Hello so, fresh. like, you know, um, but this was really great. They sent them a pizza kit. So they nice. got to make their own pizzas oh, nice. up there. Like if you're an astronaut and you've been there for six months and you're tired of the freeze-dried food and a yeah. pizza kit shows up, they didn't send them an oven, so they're going to have to figure that Maybe out. Maybe they but have one built in, though. I'm sure they do. That would be cool. Yeah, they sent them stuff for science experiments and stuff like that, but you know everyone's more happy about the uh, space pizza. The pizza. Also, it seems like if you were going to do that, you would have to be an introvert because you probably lose um, contact with a bunch of friends, sure. family. You only yeah. have like a few people up there with you. Uh, right. You and, and, must be able to deal with it pretty well. And if you don't like those people, like that would be so oh. hard. Like you're on there with like seven people for a year and then you have no real place to go. That would be difficult. That'd be rough. Yeah, because yeah, you got a lot of different people, and especially like you might have astronauts up there and scientists, and they're very different people. 
and that would be that would be hard to mm-hmm. navigate. And there's no escape. They usually spend a good amount of time together training though beforehand. Maybe so so yeah. hopefully they have like an idea. Although we send them from different countries. That's though. true. Like now we're just sending them up there, and I don't even know how we're getting them there. Honestly, like Betty was surprised to hear they were there, and then I started thinking, how do we get them there? I think we're <laughs> using like Russia or China. Maybe a big trampoline. Well, yeah, I think we're it's the Amish space program. <laughs> I think we're using uh, like other countries' rockets because we don't have the rocket oh, you're right. to carry people up there yet. Like we were, oh. we got away from the shuttle, and then we're not doing the rocket anymore. We're sending supplies through like SpaceX and stuff, hmm. um, but we must be using like Russia or China or something. Would be my guess. Sure, Jeff Bezos will get on it. Oh yeah, it's yeah. fine. Yeah. Do you guys see the video of the uh, the? Um, the astronauts like doing like mock Olympic events. Oh no! Where they were just like pretending to do the events, so you have them like kind of slowly running uh, as if eh. they're doing track or something. Synchronized swimming could be that's uh, what they, easy they did to that emulate. Too. Yeah, that one would be perfect for the it was funny. weightless environment. <laughs> uh, this is a weird thing, you know. Everybody has a different take on the vaccine, and and some people are for it, some people against it. And there was one church, so this was really interesting. This church had six people in their congregation pass away from COVID nineteen. Oh, uh, within like 10 days. So they were like, what? what just happened? You know, and again, uh, churches are at different levels. Some are fully back in, some are online still, some are a hybrid, you know. Uh, but so what they did was they actually, the pastor said, I made a decision. I'm going to hold another event so that uh, people that are sitting in the audience that are still unvaccinated uh, it, who might be open to it and get a chance to get their vaccination right here, right now. So they were oh. vaccinating people at the church. It's like an altar call, but for vaccination. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So they set up a room where you could go, like if you were, uh, you know, thinking about doing it and were on the fence. And I don't know that he did a, you know, a sermon about it, but it was like, okay. I mean, they do it at stadiums. They do it at all these other places. Church but they're makes like, sense. Yeah. I mean, if you got a large gathering of people that are there every time mm-hmm. and it might be like, oh, you know what? I'll do this today. I mean, but, I got mine because I, I, I I, I got mine because there was a sign at Target that said no waiting. Yeah, and I think a, a pastor is not a bad person to to pitch that to. Because yeah. hopefully if you're in that congregation, you have a level of trust for that pastor. Yeah. If you're, you know, if you care about the church you're going to. So hopefully, not hopefully, but like, I would think that he would have a good amount of sway over people to well, they had do that. 269 people get vaccinated on yeah. that Sunday. That's a Whoa. lot. But yeah, that's a, that surprised me. It's I thought they had that I, many I, I thought it would be 10. You know, I thought it might be 10, but 269, uh, and he said about 35% of those were teens, and the overwhelming oh, wow. majority of them uh, uh, who got vaccinated were church members, so it wasn't like they had a bunch of people walking oh, off newbies. the street. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. It is, it is weird. Like, I I mean, I've had people ask me, and uh, Pastor Chad uh, from the prayer wall was just in here a second ago. He's like, hey, have you gone back to church yet? Because we've been doing it online for over a year. And uh, and it's and I'm like no, and he's kind of laughing because like my wife, I don't understand it. Like I don't, my wife wants to be back in church, yet we just renewed our uh, subscription to A List for AMC and went and saw movies. We go out to dinner. She's one vaccination in uh, to her two, but it's like we haven't gone back to church and I've said I'll go back to church I like home church personally uh, but I for her I'm like yeah I'll go back and, and do that and she hasn't forced the issue yet and like this last weekend she was like I was like well why didn't we go this past weekend and she's like well you let me oversleep uh, and so it was too late to get oh, up and go no. and so I'm like no nah, that's, that's yeah I don't that's understand. not personal yeah I don't understand I haven't I haven't figured out why we haven't gone back or if she secretly likes the home church and it's just like blaming me for it. Well, it would be the kind of the same if let's say y'all were going to, you got your AMC card or whatever, yeah. and you're going to go see a movie, but you know that it is full to the brim. Yeah. You know that it's, people are going to be cheering. There's going to be some mm-hmm. parts in it where people are going to get excited. Yeah. Uh, and there's not going to be space between you and that person. Right. Would you still go? I'm going to eat out of their popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> do you think she would still go? No. No. So maybe it has something to do with that. Like maybe. a lot of people in the same room. Probably. Um, especially because it's not outside either. Yeah. Um, sometimes you're... And really, honestly, people don't know what to believe yeah. in. I still... I like I like I... I uh, haven't gone back. Yeah, I know. And Gavin, you don't think you have... No, no, no. I've been going back. Oh, you have. Oh, wow. that's right. Yeah, 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 yeah. They're thinking about putting the mask requirements back on us oh, at I that bet. church which yeah. I'm on record last week with my friend being like I don't want to go back to that and then yeah. last, last night he was like I think I'll do it just because I don't want to be fighting anything and I was like oh, 
she doesn't yeah. not have to do it. So. Yeah. I yeah, I um I'm not sure if that's it. Like I, I, I think that's a pretty good explanation, Rock. I find myself like being cautious ish around things like in situations like if there's a giant group of people like i'm not going to walk right into the middle of that giant group of people unless it's a work thing and i've had to do that um but like if i'm out at a store i will give a little bit of space i don't avoid aisles with people but i will Mm -hmm. if i'm in an aisle with somebody i will walk to the right hand side out of respect for them Mm -hmm. kind of thing like if they're nervous like a lady had a mask on the other day so i figured okay she's probably nervous about this so i gave her extra space thinking that maybe she would respect that but then I thought maybe she thinks I think that she's like oh my gosh virus crazy lady or whatever and I gotta avoid her but I was actually just trying to be courteous to her uh, you know feelings about the virus and things like that but I do I hold my breath when people walk by me now still I still do you do think that. you could do that at church Oh, I could do church without a, a, I could do all of this stuff without hesitation. Like I've, I'm playing golf in a golf men's league at church. And first thing that you do is you're meeting a golfer that you've never met before because they randomly pair you up. I'm like, hey dude, and you shake hands and then you sit in a cart and ride next to each other. Is it outside? It's outside, but you're literally like. You're not six feet apart. No, no. I mean, and you're like the other day I felt bad because I got in the cart and I'm coughing uh, because I had just swallowed a sip of my soda down the wrong thing. And what's the first thing everybody says? I don't have COVID. But half Mm -hmm. the people say I don't have COVID, have it. But I'm like, I literally just choked on my drink. I'm so sorry. So I went off to the side and just sat there and coughed because I didn't want to wig the guy out. Well, that would wig me out. Yeah, I know. And it wasn't intentional. And I obviously don't have COVID, but we're so freaked out about everything. But this guy was great. He worked in the medical industry and he was like yeah it's not a big deal like i'm i'm supposed to go to some uh trade show and and they want to wear masks and i don't want to go now <laughs> like okay so he didn't oh, care that's he, funny. he did not care a rip which was great for me uh lady rock what do you got uh i think all of us would agree that tom hanks is awesome yeah, he is yeah. definitely one of my favorite America's uh, actors yes and a list was put together of the 14 reasons why he is the best human. Um, I'm just going to give you five of these. So, first one is, did you know that he stopped at an In-N-Out to buy everyone in the place a free meal? See, that's just, awesome. That's so nice. Why wasn't I there? He did it. Yeah, but again, like, and again, he's like, I know that costs money, but then you can do that on a smaller scale and buy it for someone that's there, a service person, yeah. an officer, or just a random person, and have the same effect. And people will think you're like Tom Hanks. Mm-hmm. Uh, a man uh, named Stuart Stevens claims that uh, Hanks stopped in the middle of a snowstorm to help him change a flat tire. Oh, wow. So he was caught at the, on the side of the road with a flat tire, and Tom Hanks just pulled over to the side in the middle of a snow, snowstorm. Total dad change. thing. Total yeah. dad so move. Sweet. Like, he seems like he's a America's dad. Uh, there were some tourists on a tour of celebrity homes in L.A. And they were shocked when a SUV pulled over to the side of the bus and said, hey, have you seen any movie stars today? <laughs> and it was Tom Hanks. Oh, that's so, so good. great. See, I would do that stuff all the time. Or I'd be like, hey, why don't you guys come over to my house? Like, I, that would be so funny. That's a little bit. That'd uh, be awesome. Like, like, that would, like, like, the ability to shock and surprise somebody. There's this book by Chip and Dan Heath called The Power of Moments. And they, oh, that is, it's such a good book. And it's you about. read it? I, I had to for a class I was teaching. Oh, uh, but skimmed it, it. Yeah, I was definitely. Uh, just the parts we were teaching. Uh, but no, but, it, but, the, but it's really good. And it talks about, we're going to actually do a thing on the show about this uh, coming up. But it talks about, um, like, creating moments of connection with people and businesses that get this right are very successful, you know, and same thing with celebrities, the celebrities that aren't always mad at the world for making them a celebrity, like they're endeared and they're loved and they have long careers mm-hmm. because of Tom Hanks and things like this. Well, he walked by an independent bookstore doing a fundraiser to try and keep the doors open. Hey, shop girl. And in- oh. <laughs> but instead of just walking by, he stopped and decided to sign autographs to get people to come in. Nice. Oh, See, smart. that's great. I, I love that. And then uh, walking through the park one day, day he came across a crew of firefighters that were on an outing and he just shook all their hands and told them how much he appreciated them how great is your life when that is a story and like it's a big deal because you shook someone's hand and you and you told them thank you and you're a celebrity but it's well, because he did all these other things too yeah. like yeah. I, I think it's i think you have to look at it as well and he didn't post about it right 
It's the totality of his life. And so then when people have these interactions with him, they share the story. Yeah. You know, it's not him sharing the story with a publicist going, let's get this out there. Right. But uh, speaking of Tom Hanks, we also want to mention his son, Chet Hanks. I think it's his middle son. Mm, that'll be the problem. One. Uh, he's doing the complete opposite. He's oh, been post- He posted a video uh, on his social media. He's just going ballistic about the whole COVID sit- situation, the vaccine situation. And I would play a little bit of audio from it, but I would have to bleep a lot Chet. of it out. Come on, Chet. That's a no. name that Although, I associate with someone who has the ability to be a I'm probably going to burst your bubble right now, though. I had a friend that did a thing, and Tom Hanks showed up and Mm -hmm. was, like, super cool to everybody, um, but, like, was swearing like a sailor. And Tom Hanks was? Yeah, and the person that was, like, and it was with all these students, and the person that was kind of running the student thing was like, hey, uh, you know, these are kids. And he's like, ah, they're fine. They're old enough. And, like, just kept going. Maybe he was having a bad day. There it is. There's the nine, and we've come full (laughs) circle. There it is. Uh, All right, Brock, let's do some birthdays. All right, we've got one, (laughs) and it is from Brienne. Yes. She wants to wish her boyfriend, Victor, a happy birthday, Uh saying he is the most giving, loving person and shares my sense of adventure. Oh, that's cool. Oh, and he has seen Dragon Force in concert. Yes! Oh, do not let this one go. Do not let him get away. This what is, in the world? This man is a catch. Victor? How old is Victor? I don't know, but if he's seen what? Dragon Force, steal he's him. amazing. <laughs> yeah, Betty Rock just found her soulmate. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't know who Dragon Force is, here's a little taste. I don't even know what to call this music. I always call it drama rock. Like, because it's not like, like to me, it's not heavy metal at all, but it's like, it's very uh, technically, it's technical music. It's right. Fast. Yeah, wonder, but it's not techno. I wonder if the concert that Victor went to, if they played that song or not. I, they better. They better play that every song. I wish they would partner with Celine Dion and do Oh, do like together. her background music for her. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be so amazing. great. So good. Go to that concert. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Um, don't let that guy go. He's a good one there, girl. Brienne has a burning building question for okay. you, Wally. Oh, me. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you had to run a mile every day for a year <laughs> or yeah. eat a pound of green vegetables oh. every day oh, choose the, oh, wait. for a week. Oh, just for one week Yep. versus the rest of his life for a says? year, for, for a, a year. year, run a mile every day veggies, for a man. year or green, no. a pound mm. of green I veggies couldn't. every day. Like I couldn't week, do it. Which would you choose? I would have to do the running and the byproduct <laughs> of the running is it would make me like better, have better cardio. But like, I just, I can't do the vegetables. I've tried. I really have. I've tried. <laughs> I've tried to eat them. I've tried to put syrup on them. I've tried to put uh dressing on them and they just, vegetables are the worst, Uh you know? And so they're just not enjoyable. So I just don't. I refuse to eat them. No, very few. Like I've had eggplant parmesan, or no, uh, no, something at zucchini at uh, mafiosas or whatever. Z- uh, zucchini noodles? No, no. It was like a was it fried? Zucchini? Fried zucchini, I think Stubbed maybe. Zucchini. And it was good. Like that was really good. Okay. But like it was fried. Like if you fried my vegetables, I probably could do it. But a pound? Well, no, she that's doesn't a, specify. That's a lot though. Because like if you have like a whole bag of. Um, like a whole bag of green beans or spinach Ugh. or anything like that. You just have to eat so much. It's so much. A green pound, beans. though, you could get it done. Let's say you could blend it in a smoothie yeah. oh. and just drink it and I then you're done. Like I couldn't. That's still but instead, well, then you're saying you can run a mile every day for a year? Well, I'd have to. But I mean, like. Well, you, you, you could have to eat. The veggies. No, but the but the 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 thing is, I know I could at least walk, run. Like, okay, walk a little bit, run a little bit. I would throw up eating the vegetables. Like every <laughs> You'd time. You throw up running. <laughs> Probably yes, uh, but that would get better over time. Uh, I don't think veggies well, would get veggies better. The veggies could get better. Mm-hmm. You could. You could form a taste. For I tried it. having carrots, like raw carrots. I took a bite of a Those raw, like a regular carrot. No, I threw up. Like I don't like raw carrots. I like cooked carrots. I've thrown up on every vegetable that I've ever eaten. Like Brussels sprouts, throw up. Spinach, you throw up. You need to be hypnotized. Yeah, maybe. It's a brain thing. Oh, Carrots, nice. throw up. Beets, throw up. Like well, I, my, yeah. my stomach. Anybody would puke on I, beets. I have such a beets gag reflex to all that stuff. Green beans, throw up. Like, it's just, it's just, if you put a vegetable in front of me, I'm going to throw it up. <laughs> 
<laughs> I, know, I just, it just, it goes without saying. Like it's crazy. Uh, okay. I well, know I'm like a five year old, but the beauty <laughs> of being a fifty three year old is I don't have to. Yeah, that's the best. When I finally got out uh, on my own and and didn't have to eat vegetables, oh, it was life changing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a miracle you've made it this long. Oh, absolutely! I'm a I'm a medical miracle that I'm still alive. <laughs> uh, but I, I'm yes. doing doing okay. Feel pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna go not walk a mile today and not eat vegetables. Winning. I have two pounds of gummy bears at my desk that are oh calling my, my name. Gosh. That's right. Uh, during the show, Gavin's on this kick about walking. Yep. Now. Yeah. And Betty's I, doing stairs. I try to do stairs. Nice. Um, but Wally working. was like. I'm going to go grab some gummy bears. Get some gummy bears while, while you guys are doing that, and we'll we'll reconvene in, in the studio after this song. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, I think that's going to have to do it for our Aftercast today. And as always, thank thanks you so for much being for being a potty. potty.